say. I'll I just say it this way then. If the Arminian view is, in my opinion, is lim- is more limiting to God because ultimately it's not up to in that view ultimately it's not up to god Understood. to save it's it's it depends on the person Absolutely. it depends on that I person understand. god can hope god can god can try god can you know really he can really put his effort into it but ultimately it's up to the person it's limiting to god whereas the calvinist view is I understand. I mean, god it's it's a, i see it's, both sides i see total, both of them could say that. god is totally sovereign including over man's yeah. will turn to page 394 Clues were left behind that suggested a mystery, and to many humans, a mystery is irresistible. Unless I am convinced by scripture and by plain reason, my conscience is captive to the word of God. Long I pondered my king's cryptic talk and victory. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. I guess I have a lot of things to ponder. We went to Tri-State last night, my first time ever. Oh, yeah? First time ever. I've never been to the Cedarville one, Riley. You just always ask to go and we never went. So I said it was, it was not bad. I'd go again. It's fun. I was in the pit. Good, That'd good, probably make a big difference. Probably was. Good people watching to do, probably, but you probably weren't doing it in the pit. <coughs> if you're in the pit, you're probably pretty locked into the... It's a... We you working? Know. Have you changed the tires? No. Nah, he, <coughs> he said, if I have a flat, he kind of gave me the instruction of what to do if he has to come back there, but... No flat. You ever been? No, I've never been. Yeah, I thought we were recording, and I was gonna, we were going to get some good info on the Texas Motor Speed. I mean, uh, we're recording. Well, same same thing, Tri State. We were recording. Yeah. Why'd you do the ten claps? To sync the audio of all the different cameras and the audio above my head. So these everything's recording separately on on separate memory cards. Right. Including the audio just by itself. Oh, so you know on the claps where we're at on each camera or whatever. Yeah, on, you the, sync it. on the software, Mike, gotcha. you uh, you select all the clips and you can hit sync, create new multi clip yeah, is what I, it's I, called. Gotcha. gotcha. Makes it a lot easier to edit. Absolutely. Because then on the left side, there's a each camera is over on the left. So instead of trying to sync everything up and like put stuff in front of other things, you just click on the camera that you right. want it to show and it automatically sense. switches over to it. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good plan. Welcome to Pondering the Pages with Pierce and Kyle. I'm Kyle. And he's Pierce. And, and I'm we Mike. have Mike here with us today. Welcome back, Mikey Mike. Hey, How are thanks, you? buddy. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Thanks for coming. Yeah, man. You bet. What have you got to share with us? Give us your great wisdom today. Oh my goodness! I don't know that I have any. <laughs> don't give up. Don't never give up. Don't stop. I think there's a time to, according to Kenny Rogers, there's a time to give up. Let me try again. Kind of know when to hold them, know when to fold them. <laughs> you know right? what I'm saying? OJ Simpson, there's a time to give up. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, I got a question for you. Okay. Do you still use your fountain pen that you bought? I haven't started using it. Why not? I've got to get some ink and stuff for it. Hmm. I didn't really know what I was going to do with it. I'm just wondering. Yeah, no, I, I remember you bought it a while back, and I thought about it, and I was just wondering if you'd, if you're still. I figured you'd started using it, and you're going to get sick of it and not continue. No, I never started. I just uh, I never you're sick of it before you started. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was going to be a little bit of a project of kind of. You know, cleaning it up. Like I said, it was kind of an older one, mm-hmm. and then getting ink for it. But it's—I uh, think it'd be pretty easy. I—I I checked online for everything. Yeah. Did you get any ink or anything uh, yet? Not yet. Why not? Uh, just—I <laughs> just haven't uh, wanted to embark on the adventure yet. <laughs> I had so many other things going. Too busy. It's, <laughs> it's too busy for the fountain pen. It's literally just buying a little bottle of ink and. Yeah, I've got these little button push pens that are pretty simple. I think that's going to be something I can kind of put in my own personal library and just sitting there if I'm. Journalism. He's never going to use that. He might do what he just said. He'll never use it. I wouldn't either. I'd lose it after about a day. 
It'd take me about three weeks to get ink, probably too, unless it was on Amazon. It's been, like, it on Amazon? It's been like two or three months since. Is they got it on Amazon? Ink, yeah. uh, probably. Do you have to I go would, anywhere? Do I have to go into a store and buy it? Then no, I probably wouldn't. No, I I think you'd be hard pressed to find a store really? in town there where you could buy it. But there's maybe maybe off Depot, but I don't think so. Uh, but you um, you'd have to. There's there's websites that are dedicated to fountain pen supplies that you can. Honestly, it, the re, most of the reason I you forgot had, you had it. A good friend would have no, bought him just, some ink. Last no. thing I bought him, he spit in. So I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't uh, no, dump it out. Of <laughs> honestly, the reason I bought it was going to give it to you as a gift. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just haven't done that. Yet. I didn't find that. But now you. I don't believe that. Yeah, literally. I didn't really know what I was going to do with it. Or pretty simple. I think it's going to be something I can kind of put in my own personal library and just sitting there. If I'm. That's April. That's why I bought it. I listened to the mm-hmm. first fountain pen episode uh, again the other day. Second time, what do not you, the whole episode, but just, do you know what episode? Like how? Gosh, no, it was a while back. I tell you what the discussion was, but what was the discussion about? What about fountain pens? <laughs> <laughs> no, you were like explaining, you know, how much they cost because you were talking about how yours is like a like a lower end mm-hmm. good one, and mm-hmm. how eighty dollars is a cheap is not expensive. That some of them are like crazy numbers and how expensive they yeah, are. Yeah, there are some. Anyways, there are some that you can get for like ten bucks, uh, but that's kind of. That's kind of. I don't think it would last very That's long. What me and Kyle need. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't think it would last very long. So it's kind of something yeah. you could get just to see if you even like using yeah. it. You know, feather pen. You should do that. A George feather Washington. pen. I've actually heard uh, some of the videos that I've seen on fountain pens. They've talked about feather pens, and those are much harder to use. I'm sure. Apparently, like a quill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to keep yeah, gotta dipping dip it all the time. Well, and it's like. It's got to be exactly right, right as far as, as yeah. As, uh, it's, seems like it'd be difficult. Yeah, you kind of, if you've probably yep. ever been to Washington, D.C. and you look at the original Magna Carta and the original mm-hmm. Declaration of Independence, you know, obviously they're written like that and that angle you're talking right. about. To where it's, it's almost like a, uh, what's the what's the word for that type of writing? Calligraphy. It's almost a type of calligraphy look, I guess, because it has that quill flattens and stuff. It gets wider strokes and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, it's cool. I came up with a name for the playlist. Oh. Discog of the Disciples. Oh. That was the best thing I could think Discog of. Discog of the Disciples. Yeah. Have you seen that episode yet where I talked about the new playlist? I don't actually. I think I just edited it and uploaded it yesterday. Does it ring a bell? And I think I've listened to every, I think I've listened to all, every episode. I got, I had three of them. I finished editing the third yesterday and uploaded one yesterday and then two up two more of them are scheduled so it, i think it's one of those three kids were super excited when y'all we've, yeah we've, you finally got that one up so we started listening to that on a yeah it took me a while to get it up i, I got burned out on uh, editing. dude i get it that's a lot man absolutely yeah. he kept asking me and i'll explain yeah <laughs> like he well i haven't gotten any more i don't think they need to no we need to re we need to re-up yeah, to school it, yeah. year's almost over School yeah. year is football's over. not over, but school year's almost over. Yeah. Yeah. No more. Mike Lowry's a football coach at a local high school. You're kind of like uh, Coach Boone. Herman. You still <laughs> linebackers coach? Run it up, Herman. Leave no doubt. <laughs> um, yeah. I wouldn't say I'm like Herman. I mean, I guess a little bit. You meant. From Remember the Titans. Oh, because I'm a football coach? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's just the only. That's <laughs> I know you mean because I was a football coach or because I was black or because I was a great football coach. That's or, the only football coach I could think of. Yeah. Of his name. No, I like him. I don't, know, did I, don't, good job I don't know the names. He did do a good job on that. I don't know the names of any other football coaches. Bear Bryant. Vince Lombardi. I, yeah, I, I thought he was a player. Well, he played before he coached. Okay. He I didn't the, know he coached. Probably one of the greatest coaches of all time in the NFL. Joe Montana. He's the best tackler I've seen since Joe Montana. Joe Montana was a quarterback, you idiot. I said Joe Montana. <laughs> he didn't coach. I don't think he did. <laughs> Houston clip. Nut. You know Houston Nut. I've heard that name of everybody complaining about him. Yeah. Or they liked him. Was he one of the – Was well, he, a hero? he was a hero or a villain? I can't remember. He was Arkansas. I think coach. everybody that coaches at Arkansas is both because when they come, they're heroes, and then you're every either. one of them is eventually going to be a villain. It's kind of Arkansas, interesting to see how Calipari does. Arkansas, fan, uh, yeah. He dies, die as a hero or live long enough to become the villain. Yeah. I was yes. just thinking about that quote the other day. Uh, uh, super familiar. What is it? 
I don't know. I can't remember what it's from. It's probably been in a few things. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. But I was thinking about that quote the other day and I was wondering if it was true. What is the quote? You either die a hero or live long enough to become a villain or to see yourself become a villain. Hmm. Seems like in the movies. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's probably been in a few of them. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's true, though. Uh, Arkansas fans hate Calipari within a couple of years when he starts losing. Arkansas fans are... They're terrible. Worst. Maybe worst. They're... Worst yeah. in Oklahoma. Oh, for sure. I mean, worst in a different way. Oklahoma fans think they're the best at everything, no matter what, and nobody in the country can beat them, but... <laughs> Except Texas. No, they, they don't think anybody can beat them. No, I know. I'm saying... Yeah, I remember when Alabama was, like, just an absolute machine and, you know, Oklahoma... Fans before the national championship and do them, they were like, Did you ever watch that? I mean, Alabama would have beat their brains in every single year. <laughs> Did you ever watch that show? Sorry, Kyle. I'm trying. I'm. I'm not really trying to get you started Alabama. up. I'm just. No, it's just no, you're good. Alabama's there, good. What's, there's there were years there where yes. now not anymore. And I hate Alabama. Thank was that worse than Oklahoma? I don't like. A, was that show called Hoover High when it was Hoover High? Do you remember watching that? Vaguely. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a cool show. That, I guess. It was a show, I think it was when I was in like junior high. It was probably 2008, 2009. Uh, it, they followed a, a football team from Alabama, a high school football uh, team from Alabama. And they were like undefeated. They were crazy good. And yeah, it was it was kind of like a reality show. They did a Hoover. There's times for, oh, there's times for Alabama football that I thought they could probably be NFL teams. Play with them probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not, 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 not recently. Mm -hmm. Just they're. Just so well. Don't take that wrong, Oklahoma fans. I'm not saying either that there have been years where Oklahoma would definitely absolutely beat Alabama. Yeah. There's just a few years there where. They beat them in that. They beat them in a bowl game be, a few years ago. Even more. They might be able to beat them a lot, but there were a few years there where they weren't beating them. And there were, nobody was beating them. Nobody was beating Are them. you a passionate fan of any team no. at all? I, I never have. I've never experienced not. that. I'm not over the top. I just, uh, I like, I've, I've, I remember I've, I've tried to care i've wanted to care in the past like going to football games and stuff and going over to uncle allen's to watch them and it's it's like trying to get you to care about a thing a pack of stickers i mean it's like I, <laughs> dude, just, just, like throw yeah, it throw it away and i'll never stickers. throw it away and i'll a never think about it stickers. again that's oh, like that's yeah. how much i care about somebody it. who was it the, last week they bring stickers was it great paul, paul paul always brings stickers the kids love him and he brings stickers in his bible yeah, it's kind of funny. Keep stickers in the Paul, back. Who's Paul? Kinder. Kinder. He, oh. He's got stickers in his Bible, so the kids always come up to him and get he's stickers. He's the apostle right? that wrote most of the New Testament. <laughs> uh, I am uh, shockingly, um, I have shockingly almost no knowledge when it comes to, like, as a football coach, things football related. Really? Other than, I mean, now the game itself. Yeah, but as, like, as but far like, as current events and. Yeah. yeah. Like most guys, you, most guys I coach with, they can tell you who the top 10 most well known high school coaches in Arkansas were. I don't know any of them. I know most. Of, I know most. Unless I know, I know them. I know most what I know about football from either movies or studying leadership books where they were. Yeah. They were, I mean, I know some history. Yeah, that's. I know some history, but like as far as current stuff, like if you ask me who's coaching the NFL teams. Couldn't, couldn't say. No clue. Mm -mm. I don't have an idea. I mean, maybe College. one, two. I mean, yeah, I mean, I couldn't even pull their name right now. Crazy guy with the Dolphins. I like him. He's pretty interesting. Dan Marino. No, he was he's a quarterback a, for the Dolphins. He's a coach. You know what I'm talking about? Laces out, Dan. Hmm. What do you know? They're little footballs. <laughs> Laces out. I can't remember his name, but yeah. Anyways. So question. Okay. Is this question of the week? Yeah. What did you do with the little piece of paper? I saw right here. Okay, okay. Randall Branson from Cassville, Missouri. That's what you were writing down. <laughs> Asked, does God ever approve of dishonesty? Oh, man. No. There are a lot of examples of dishonesty where there wasn't, like, punishment. Yeah, but there's also, also polygamy and murder. and Yeah, yeah. So, I would say, I would no. say no. I would say yeah, approve that's, of. That's obviously my first reaction, but. I think there are a lot of examples where. Go with your gut on that one. Yeah, I, I I would say no. It's not in alignment with the character of God. Yeah, He doesn't change. Yeah, yeah. Get a I'm question. sure that's correct. Get a new question. That one was uh, short. short. Hebrews thirteen eight. Hebrews thirteen eight. I'm still thinking. 
So that's Jesus entirely Christ, oh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That would be an entire entirely flesh trait, characteristic, fruit. I'm trying to think like way outside the box. You know what I mean? For what? That last question to make it a little more interesting. Mm. Who's this one from? Kim Tuner in Nashville, Arkansas. Hey, that's where Coach Henry's from. Where's uh, Where is Nashville, Arkansas? Down south. How far south? We south. We down low. Is it closer to the Louisiana border than it is to us, Fort Smith? Yeah. 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 Than it is to us, yes. Okay. What makes a Christian distinctly Protestant? That's a tough question because I don't even know if I 100% know. Well, I can. You kind of have to specify for them a little bit. Distinctly Protestant as opposed to Catholic, it would be your soteriology. <laughs> You're saved by faith alone. Saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. You're not saved by any works, including going to confession or saying Hail Marys or Our Fathers or doing Baptize. or doing penance or even, yeah, even baptism. So as opposed to Catholic, it's... Uh, it's it's your soteriology where you stand on the doctrines of salvation, but as opposed to Mormon, it's a totally different answer. So I mean, it's kind of I'm assuming they're asking. Uh, it's a, I don't know. I didn't give any specifics. Maybe they could come up with some emails real quick since they're listening live. Probably Kim, we know you're listening. Send us an email: theporchfortsmith at gmail dot com. Shout out to Nashville. Shout out to Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> Another question? Sure. If you want. I mean, do we feel like we answered that one? I was the only one that answered. But. I thought it was good. An- I, I thought it was a good answer. I didn't have. I mean, I that was good as I could have come up with. Yeah. This one's blank. Doesn't have a name on it. You know, I mean, I gotta think about these <laughs> too. Like I'm still, yeah. I'm still on the. He doesn't want to come up. With I'm still on trying to think of a reason of a time when you can be dishonest and it's okay. Well, approved, approved of by God was the way it was. So there's uh, there's there's examples in scripture where people people are dishonest. Uh, was it Abraham? Abraham and Lot both did the same. Both said the same lie, if I remember correctly. Like pretty close to each other, right? Yep. Where they both said their wife was their sister. Pretty sure they both did it. I don't remember Lot doing it. Yeah, and I'm, that's what I mean. I'm not even talking about like. There's stuff like that where it happens. Well, obviously but, that's blatant, and then but it doesn't obvi- mean God approves of it. And then obviously there's situations like that where. There's obviously we can see why they did it, like keep somebody from getting killed or to keep somebody from, I won't say that, you know, something bad happening to their wife or daughter or sister or whatever, but like, what, like, you know, giving us, you're, you're uh, speaking in front of a group of people and you say something that's not true in order to make them laugh and give entertainment. Like, that's not honest. But is it okay? That's where I was going. It's somewhere like that, like something completely like not important, like an air, something that's not. It was Abraham that did it twice. It wasn't Abraham a lot. Abraham did it twice. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. So that's where I was going. Hmm. I was taking it as literal as possible. And the answer still may be no. I don't know. I was just, that's why I was just trying to think. Of it's no. I was thinking if there's a situation. It's still no. I used to have a monkey on my shoulder. He would play these. Sounds. Yeah. Dude, I tried to find, whenever I. He would play. No, I had one. Really? Yeah. One with when I was a kid, he would spin around in a circle. Had a little red. Uh-huh. Had a little red button. He would shake it and I, stuff. I tried to find. See, I didn't have one, but I, so I just was completely dishonest. But that was that okay? I was trying to be funny. Make you laugh. No, it wasn't okay. Right, see, I think it was. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're. It was. If you're. I mean, I, if you're obviously telling a joke, uh, if you're making a joke about something. Yeah. Huh. Then that I wouldn't call that dishonesty. Would, okay, you're, you're so we differ on the definition of honesty. Yeah, like intentional honest. deceit. Yeah. Okay. Definitely wrong. Yeah. 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 Which is why that's why I was saying a minute ago. I got you. Import, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. But, People try to rationalize a little white lies. Gotcha. So. Huh? No, that's People wrong. No, I think that they sure do. Uh-huh, yeah. Which is for sure wrong. I mean, I agree. I was trying not is, to hurt the person. Oh. I, I told them that. No, you don't look fat. Sh- yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's easier said. <laughs> Even a fool is seen as wise. When that's easier said that. single than married. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Let your let your let your Don't quietness 
That's your quietness. <laughs> that takes answer, it to so. a whole nother level, Pierce. <laughs> You're better off just say some, you look fat. I've heard somebody else say that. Or it's, I know, but it's I'm like, just saying, don't, don't, don't ask, don't do that. Don't ask a question you don't want answers to. Yeah, but I was just saying it'd be better to answer your fat. You look really fat than <laughs> it, it would be to go. Don't ask stupid questions. Dumb question. What are you looking for, Kyle? That's a dumb question. Nehemiah five twelve. What's there? Nehemiah characteristically takes immediate action, which shrewdly Excellent. limits any propensity to forget the agreement that he has made this oath is a renewal of their commitment to keep the law of moses concerning lending and debt slavery it was just i was going to the ten commandments and see if uh bearing false witness against your neighbor your neighbor i was kind of thou shalt not lie <laughs> but thou shalt not lie is not one of the commandments it's got to be in there in the oh. ten commandments yeah there's got to be something about lying in there. I always thought there was. In the Ten Commandments, bearing false witness against your neighbor would be the closest, brother. Okay. Uh, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Bearing, would do you think? Would you say that bearing false witness against your neighbor would be? Say it's could lying. could blanket uh, be a blanket? I feel like it, all lies cover all mm-hmm. lies, or no? Well, no, I think it's the closest. I think it's the closest yeah. to thou shalt not lie. Mm-hmm. You immediately said it was not okay, though. So why? Why you? What made you say that? I mean, I, there's obvious answers, or not obvious, but like, what made you? I think lying's a sin. But I'm saying, what biblically made you say no? Do, say no that it's that. Yeah, God immediately you said no. That's why I was just. You know. I think there are examples of people lying where there wasn't any severe punishment for that, but I think that. And I use Hebrews thirteen eight. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's sinless, and we're supposed to be like Christ. So I think that lying is a sin. What are you looking for, Mike? Oh, I was, a song that I thought when you said that. Nothing important. Have, is repentance, is oh, repentance like an oh, aspect okay. of faith, or is repentance a good work? Uh, is repentance an aspect of faith, or is repentance a good work? Repentance is a good work. That according to you guys, good work two weeks ago. Repentance is a good work that is a fruit of faith that is that, that comes out of faith. Both, then you're saying both, absolutely. Aspect of well, no, it's I don't, I wouldn't, it's not really an aspect of faith. It just what's aspect? I mean, what's the word? What's the definition of aspect? It's a good question. Uh, we need to do that first, probably because that's the only thing we would disagree on that, then, I guess. Well, I don't disagree because I don't know what aspect is. You could be right. I would uh, part or feature of something. I would say it's definitely a part or feature of. Well, I would. I would uh, faith. Would you not? I would. I wouldn't use repentance to define faith. If that makes it sense. doesn't say that though. It says a part of it, or a feature of it. Is it a part of faith? It's an it's an outcome of it, but it's not. Um, the same way that you arriving to a location is not a feature of your car. It's you use your vehicle to get there, but it's not, it's not a part of your car. It's not a feature of your car. You arriving to the destination. You walking into a building is not a feature of your car. It's, it's, you needed your car to get there, but it's not a feature of it. You needed the faith to repent, but it's not really a feature of faith. Or tires a feature on a car. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that this is a great analogy, and analogies usually fall apart. But, I mean, if we talk about faith being the seed that grows, maybe the first thing that has to happen, I think, in conjunction with that that seed bursting forth life is repentance. Yeah, y'all talked about that. It was an interesting conversation a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it started one week when I was here, which one, which thing comes first. And then you were talking about order and how close they are. But then y'all specifically talked about, about that, mm-hmm. whether or not it was work and when it occurred. Yeah. The seed being the, I mean, I'm just going to use this, the seed being the word of God. It's the gift of faith that is given by God to cause it to grow. But then repentance because of faith toward God should be a natural outcome of faith. Mm-hmm. I would, okay. I would think um, it's almost like it's if we kind of talked about. I just don't get. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's maybe it's semantics or whatever. But thanks for teaching me that word. Aspect. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I don't see how that's not a part of it. Then you just said causes it, so it's I'm saying it's, we got to be we got to be viewing a part or a feature as a different thing if it's not a part of it. I mean, it's not only a part of it; it's an essential part of it. To me, it's a it's an essential it's fruit a, that is that requires faith. Without faith, you I don't think you can have true repentance. I don't disagree, disagree with that. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that for sure. Which even makes it even more of a part of it to me that you can't even do it without faith. So I, when I say part, I'm talking about they are like that. So that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You know what you just said. You can't do it. You can't even do this without faith. So they're definitely like that. That's what I was. I, but I get yeah. the feature thing. I kind of see what you were saying feature wise. You're thinking I'm like, yeah, like, like the radio is not a feature. You're going to tell me the radio is not a feature. No, the radio is a feature of a car, but, but how, it's not how essential. Would, but how would you define faith? How would I define faith? Yeah. You want me to go cliche, super cliche? Whatever. Believing in something, right? But yeah, I mean that's the scriptural I mean, definition. Yeah. Believing Scrip- in something you can't scriptural. see. I, so th- I, I think yeah, I think believes obviously part of it because when we have faith in something, we believe mm-hmm. in it. Um. Uh, sometimes I think it's it's probably hard to explain faith. Mm-hmm. Something you feel, maybe. Uh, so. So. You didn't just now, and I wouldn't use repentance to define faith. Repentance is a byproduct of faith, but I wouldn't use de- repentance to define faith. So because of that, I would say... That, I understand. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm coming from. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't define it with it for sure. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a natural byproduct of faith. It's a it's a byproduct of faith, I think. Kind of like heat is a byproduct of the sun, but it's is, not part of the sun. You said repentance, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Would would you would you guys um would that would the word repentance only be in re, in um dealing with with uh, God that word only be re- referenced in that way I mean obviously based on the def- based on what we're saying like you can't repent without faith but when you just think about that word as a basic word mm-hmm. could could some because what what would you, yeah I mean it's it's just a could you repent to somebody else is what I guess I'm asking. Yeah. Not unto salvation, obviously, but yeah, you could. Yeah. yeah so if you, you, I was just curious what you would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Asking yeah. for forgiveness, I think, is very associated to repentance, which most people understand. So, yeah, it's kind of the action part of it. So you could repent. You would say you could repent to someone else without faith in God, but you couldn't repent as obviously to God for sin and without salvation. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Clear, clear as a bell. Yeah, because uh, no. just a kind of an extreme example, but if you're cheating on your wife and then you repent of that, you quit doing that, you turn away from that, and yeah, you stop. Right. So you can repent of of makes sense uh, gotcha. of anything, but as far as as acknowledging biblical, uh, yeah, yeah, acknowledge, yeah, acknowledging that you've sinned and God. repenting of that because of faith in Christ. Yeah, because you're not going to repent or obedience to faith. Christ. Right, kind of dumb. Yeah, the motivation for the action is, I think, the the defining. If my motivation for, let's just say, paying taxes is I don't want to get caught by the IRS, <laughs> but if my motivation for paying taxes and being honest with my taxes is the Scripture, based on my faith in God and that the Word of God is true, if my repentance and doing those actions is based on the faith that the Word of God is true then I think that that's faith toward God. Mm-hmm. But if I'm just doing it just not to get caught, then you're only asking for forgiveness for some type of, you know, to not receive some type of retribution or punishment from a world system. Yeah. But I think that if you're truly trying to do it because you want to please God, it's impossible to please God without faith. Mm-hmm. And then I think that, Hebrews 6, even when we talked about that, I think last week or the week before, you know, faith toward God is the first of the, the six elements, and then it's repentance of dead works. Mm-hmm. So, and I think that even goes into the Protestant, prostitute, Protestant and Catholic discussion <laughs> that we've talked about. It's like repentance from dead works. What's the difference in a prostitute and a Catholic? Is that what you're going to say? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So I think repentance from dead works is when Mm -hmm. you think that you're earning your righteousness because of doing something, I think that that would line up more with, uh, but I think that 
repentance from dead works is a is a heavy topic that I think a lot of people still fall within on a regular basis without the word of God to kind of clearly direct their steps. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that I I would say that repentance is a good work. Mm-hmm. I, I would say that it is a good work. I don't think that repentance happens before the gift of faith is given. So it has to be a byproduct of faith. Faith is the precursor to repentance happening. Mm-hmm. So it has to be a good work. I would agree. Faith comes first, but it's still part of faith. Obviously, that right. that that concept that you guys have been talking—I mean, that makes—I get it. So mm-hmm. I'm not, but in my mind, I've always thought of good works as like doing things for other people and not to please God. Both. I know, but mm-hmm. do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like reading your Bible to me. Not, okay, I don't yeah, yeah. believe this, but yeah. it would not be something I would equate to a good work in the past. Yeah, I'm not saying I don't understand. I'm just saying like that's never been most yeah. of the time when you think of it, which I think most people. But when you talk about <clears throat> whether or not it's based on salvation, man, it would even then it would be like really because that's the kind of stuff that people get caught up in. Like, yeah. if I'm not reading my Bible every day, am I going to heaven? <laughs> if I'm not repenting. I must, you know, yeah. what I mean, that's the things that. So, from that standpoint, that's a very that's makes that's sense. that's kind of goes back to that difference between Protestants and Catholics. That's a very Catholic way of thinking of like, I've got to maintain my salvation by doing good things. You know, I think when we use the word Catholic, you know, the word Catholic means universal. So when we say Catholic, we're actually ro- Roman, I would say that we're referencing Roman the Roman Catholic religion. Church. Yeah, I think. I think a lot of people probably don't even know that Catholic means universal. So yeah, yeah, but yeah. I... On the flip side of that, interesting, and I'm not to not to be real, not to lump everybody in a category because we know there's mm-hmm. different. You know, everybody's different, but it's almost like it seems like to me in the Protestant faith, it's almost like that work hurts people too, but in almost in a different way because, like, in the Catholic faith, if you if you do those things. If you or if you don't do those works, you can go like you said. You can go, you know, come, you can go repent. You can go to the priest, and like everything's good. Light you, a candle, you pay did. money. But like Protestant, it's almost like you see, you don't see more people. I'm just saying, like it appears that people that don't do the works that they're supposed to and feel condemned or convicted, con- condemned probably over not doing works, would be more like I'm not good enough and all that instead of like being able to like move. If that make I was completely confused, didn't I? I think it kind of goes, I mean, I don't know that it's the same thing, but faith without works is dead. That's kind of what we're talking about in James. It's just like, because you have the gift of faith, you're motivated to do the good works that the Bible tells you to do. And I think that it goes down to the way that Jesus kind of summarized the Old Testament. Love God with everything you got, and I'm summarizing that. And love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others, you would have them do unto you. And so I think that, when your motivation is to fulfill scripture after the gift of faith, then I think it's a good work because you know that your salvation is in Christ alone Uh, because there is no remission of sins without the shedding of blood. And when you have the gift of faith to believe that Jesus shed blood is what paid the penalty for your sin. then I think that you have the gift of faith Mm -hmm. and that is given to you by God. I think there's a lot of people that don't believe that. And I can't make them believe that. All I can do is share the gospel with them and hope, hope that the Holy Spirit would justify them based on the gift of faith given to them. It's just like, I I don't know what else. Yeah, just sow seed and God does, God has to make it grow. It seems. What were you, go, what were you, yeah, try to say that again. Yeah, it it was kind of a confusing thing. I knew that when I started to say it. Um, (laughs) Roll a clip. Sometimes I'll start a sentence, and I don't even know where it's going. I just hope I find it along the way. You said, which I'm, this is not was not anything I was arguing. I was just thinking about from the perspective is you were, you were saying like it's almost a part of, and I don't know enough about it to tell, but works is almost a part of your salvation hmm. with the Catholic. Oh, okay. that's what you were saying. Like yeah. that's like. Super, you yeah, got yeah. You got to do whether you completely believe that as a Catholic or not. I'm sure there's Catholics that don't completely believe that, but it, mm-hmm. it there's a big focus on it. Yeah, this is kind of what you were saying. It's very, know? it's a very works based, works heavy. And so I was, I, because of that, I was trying to relate that on the flip side to Protestant, and I feel like it impacts a lot of people almost in a 
in a bad but opposite way that are Protestant. They feel condemned. By not doing work, so therefore their push is to go out and do as many, not because of, not because yeah. it says it in. Well, so there's a so lot. that's what I'm saying. I, there's a lot of people that probably feel I, I mean be, being one in the past. Like well, and there's not, a lot of there's not, a lot of Protestants who probably wouldn't say it, but function under that Catholic way of thinking. Of no, that's and that's kind of where I was. Yeah, yeah yep, that's what I was kind of like. There's a lot of Protestants that believe if you don't do good works, you'll lose your salvation. I mean, it's that's you'll hear them say, I just haven't done enough. Well, internally, that's yeah. what I was saying. Like, to them, even yeah. if they don't really, really believe that, yeah, they a probably lot of times they tell themselves that, that. Yes, mm-hmm. that's where I was okay. trying to I go with you. that. Yeah. It's kind of the Arminian view. I mean, the Arminian way of thinking, honestly. <clears throat> that's been a hot topic. Oh, we were talking about, I was Haynes and me and Haynes and another guy I coach with have been kind of, they've been bringing up some biblical theology. So that's cool to discuss. I think that's cool to discuss at work. Yeah. It's good. It's what have y'all talked about? Oh gosh. What's 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 well, his? That was one, obviously. What's his? Such, is he a Christian or is he mm-hmm. like a okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was wondering if he was like born again, curious yeah. and you and asking you questions. No, or? just we were no, just like if me and you and Kyle were talking about mm-hmm. so what you think, what you agree with. What he's not one of the. Say. He's not one of the ones I met at your place at Thanksgiving a couple mm-hmm. years ago. So. Uh, they're probably that, all gone. Yeah, one of them, uh, the Mexican guy, I think. He yeah, was... Perez, he's back. He came back. Oh, did he? Yeah, he was actually one of them I was talking about. Okay, yeah. He would. Um, he yeah, because was... he was going to coach somewhere else or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he went to Siloam. But he was actually one of the guys that were in the conversation Okay, that we were talking about. So, Oh, talking about gift, faith, and chosen and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's And I was talking about you guys and, you know. How I know what you I know what you think I for sure know how you feel and I feel very strongly that he's moving in that direction even though I know at one time he was where I'm probably still at now and uh, you if know. if I have assessed so. correctly I would say me and Kyle agree on pretty much all of that I'm just uh, quicker to and maybe that's put what it I'm out saying. there that's why I said closer yeah so. I don't yeah. want to put words in your mouth, but no, I think well, I just... like that, like he said just now, like uh, it's my job to tell somebody and hope that the Holy Spirit will. I forgot the exact terminology used, but like regenerate them, yeah, I mean, but that... lead that to believe that that if they're chosen, that might not happen, or if they aren't chosen, that couldn't happen. So, does that? Yeah. That, so... so I'm saying he was he leaves those little possibilities of maybe i don't know a hundred and i could be wrong kyle i'm not trying no, to speak I'm, for you i'm just no, no you're good mm-hmm. like he may not be 100 percent sure that there aren't that people can't come to faith as far as not a calvinistic view or not a whatever yeah. other views that might uh-huh. be like you basically if you're not chosen you're going to hell and there's nothing anybody can do about it that view I, I don't know. That's what I was saying. Where, like you said, you're you're just like, yep, that's exactly how I feel. Mm-hmm. So, that's what scripture says, basically. Now well, it says a lot of different stuff. And we're not going to go there today <laughs> in the podcast, but that's why there's so we much. Can. No, I'm but that's why it. there's so many. I mean, that's why. I mean, that's why there's so many different. I mean, I think there's, that's a, there's a lot of smart people that yeah. don't believe that. To, there's a lot of theologically smart, intelligent yeah. Christians who have been great leaders. Who have been now that, very biblically knowledgeable. Let me let me that, put a that uh, didn't think that. You know me, what I'm saying? Let me put a qualifier on that. There's nobody who will be in heaven who doesn't want to be, and there's nobody who won't be in heaven who wanted to be. Nobody, nobody, well, of course, nobody yeah. is trying because made, God made them think a certain thing and have that desire. Um, I don't know if I'd say it that way. Every everybody is is born um, sinful. Everybody's born in a sinful state. Everybody is is born completely sinful with the sin nature, and loves sin and darkness and hates God's law and is an enemy of God. Everybody is born in that state. Agree. So, it requires God to change that in somebody. Agree. So it's so. To say, like that thing that you said, um, uh, if you're not chosen, then you're going to hell and there's nothing that anybody can do about it. 
while I wouldn't say it that way, I would say technically that is correct. No, that's, that's what I believe. Yeah. But yeah. there's not there's nobody out there who is like, man, I really wanted to get into heaven, but I just wasn't chosen. I really wanted to, but I just wasn't chosen. If you're it's when it talks about being a slave to sin or a slave to Christ, slave to sin in the sense that you love your sin. You you love it. You're not you don't want to leave it. You don't want to repent of it. You want you love it and you want to yeah. indulge in it. And and that is essentially your idol ultimately i just feel like like i don't mean this in a bad way but like mm-hmm. saying it like i wouldn't say it like that is a cop out to not say it like that because that's the that would be the most people wouldn't have a problem with the statement nor would i nobody's going to be in hell that wanted to be in heaven well, absolutely not. no i'm, I'm you know what i'm saying the though? statement of there's it's there's, a lot more if you're not chosen you're going to hell and there's nothing anybody can do about it i i just that's a truth i would phrase it differently i mean there's there's I know, but I'm saying though that's saying it that way, factually, mm-hmm. is what is what why is would, why people would have questions. Is why some people would not be able to get there in a period yeah, of time. Yeah, yeah. Does that mm-hmm. does that make sense? Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I even told them like I'm a lot closer to that than I used to be, but I still don't. I still haven't got a. Yeah, I mean, you can you can eat a you can eat an egg raw, or you can cook it first so that it tastes good. I mean, there's there's different ways to present the same truth. There's different, and it doesn't mean you're changing it. It just you're you're uh, uh, presenting it in a, in a way that's palatable. That's, but that takes but that kind of goes both ways. I'm saying like mm-hmm. the second one, nobody's going to be in hell, right? That wanted to be in heaven, right? Okay, well, I agree with that. From the other, the that holds true with both viewpoints, though. That can hold true with the if 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 God's if everybody has the opportunity to go to heaven and God has not preordained and chosen these people to go to heaven and condemned mm-hmm. these, mm-hmm. which is essentially what mm-hmm. okay that point of they view condemn themselves. Yeah, go ahead. I don't understand that, but that's okay because that doesn't. I can't wrap my brain around that. Not because I feel sympathy there. or sadness because because the other side of that with me is like. The logic of getting to the point where there are people going to go to hell and I can't save everybody, I am perfectly comfortable with now. And I used mm-hmm. to not be. It mm-hmm. used to bother me. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That used to be something that really bothered me. And now I'm like, oh, well, yeah. that's that's going to happen. And mm-hmm. when it does, I can't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so from that standpoint, I think I've probably grown closer to that viewpoint. But I can't. But I. But like I said, I think both viewpoints would agree with. Nobody's going to, I don't think anybody's going to go to hell that wanted to be in heaven. Right. I don't think that, Mm -hmm. um, everybody that, you know what I mean? And so I, I agree with that with a different viewpoint than you. So that would saying it like that holds true to both beliefs. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, Mm -hmm. where it's a common, where, where you said you would agree, but say it differently that basically there are certain people that are condemned to hell and can't do anything about it. You agreed with that, but wouldn't say it that way. Right. But I disagree with that. So that's why okay. I would say it that way. Okay, just because that's you, something. You, Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 It's the clearest way of presenting it to show a difference. Yeah, I guess. I, got maybe. You. Yeah. I don't know, but, mm-hmm. and, and that's what we talked about too, is like, I was talking about, because <laughs> obviously, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of believers that believe that just because it's easier. Believe like, what believe that, Everyone has that opportunity, and that yeah. God didn't preordain these people are going to be chosen, and these people aren't. And yeah. I, I'll use the word chosen lightly because I feel like there's a possibility, mm-hmm. even though I know you don't, you know that that could mean or be different things, which you can you can completely disagree with what you do, but you can appreciate the understanding of how somebody might see that. You're talking about you the know, word chosen, yeah, chosen, or just whatever in all that. Conver- you mm-hmm. can see the other side of that conversation, even though you don't believe it. You, yeah. you get why people might think that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, yeah. Um, but when I was talking to Mike about that, I was talking about uh, how good, like, people that are differently around you that view things differently are, like, you for me, because it makes me go, okay, I got to look at this closer. Yeah. I got to be open to the fact that I could be wrong about this, which you guys have both talked about, you know. Mm-hmm. You guys have both been in that situation with different things too. You know? yeah, 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 absolutely. I think you talked about one a couple of weeks ago that you, I don't remember what it was, but just something that you had kind of always thought was true, and then you recognize 
something trying to, and trying to remember what that was. I don't remember. I don't even know. Oh, it was a revelation. You found something in revelation. Remember oh, about, yeah, yeah. yeah. So just stuff like that, you <laughs> yeah. know, being open to being wrong, I yeah. guess. Right, right, right. You yeah. Know, so. Yeah, being changing your opinion when you're presented with a new piece of information. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was the we talked a lot about that, which was a good conversation to have, which causes anybody to spend more time in scripture and reading and prayer. Yeah, and, yeah, that's a so. that's a tough uh that's a tough topic for a lot of people in the best explanation as to why that I've come up with so far that and I've heard so far is that it's extremely damaging to human pride and it it um, get it yeah I, get, I mean I get that's what I'm saying I, I and I, my, and that's why my, and that's why I can't think that just because of that and that's yeah. what I'm trying to get mm-hmm. personally is like I can't think that just because of that yeah I got to think of it because there's another reason yeah yeah, and my, you know, one so. of my favorite quotes, I always forget who said this. It was Jonathan Edwards or one of those guys. But they they said, uh, the, on, the only thing that you contributed to your salvation was the sin that made it necessary. That's kind of the, the point of. It's just, it kind of sums it up well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wasn't saying, yes, I agree. I was saying, yes, I get it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So even is, though, even so though, do you agree? Or even disagree? though, once again, I don't know. I have to think about that. Okay, it's a good question. But so let me let me ask. Once you again, if question. I agreed with you, I would still have. I don't know. Let me ask you. Let exactly. me ask you a follow up question that'll kind of help you think about it. What have you contributed to your salvation? If there's a if there's a possibility that you're that the sin that made it necessary was not the only thing I, 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 that's what i'm saying i don't know i know this is going to sound super weird and mm-hmm. you're going to win because you're a lot better at this stuff than i am what about winning i know you're not trying to win but you're trying yeah. to talk to me about it but at the same time um i get what you're saying mm-hmm. and i'm not and i probably agree with you i would probably agree with you but there's something else like that i don't know really I'm trying to think how to say it it's gonna be a boring part of the show. Watch Mike sit there and be quiet and think. I cut those. Out. <laughs> I, I cut those out. <laughs> That'll be funny though. <laughs> that, I guess, right? uh, Six hours later, because I don't. <laughs> and then we talked about. And I'm saying I'm not ignoring your question. Yeah, I know. I know you're not. Um, I'm not going to heaven because of my works, mm-hmm. but my works are still important. I, I would agree with Absolutely. that. So what did I do to, to earn my salvation? Probably nothing. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I don't know that somebody else didn't, but somebody else um, challenging me or being obedient to the Lord with me or something like that might not have impacted, maybe not even, and I'm not going there, so I don't know, but maybe not even my eternal salvation, but maybe my, when I got to salvation. I mean, I don't know. You know, yeah, so I would, that, I would it all even make sense what I'm yeah, trying to absolutely, say? Yeah, absolutely. I would, I, I would say um, they, let, just use an example. It's or a hypothetical. Let's say uh, in your life, whenever you got saved, there was one person that. Hang on, I got to put my hat back on. I look oh, goofy. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> there, there, <laughs> let's let's right. say, let's just a hypothetical. Let's say in your. <laughs> In your life, there was there was one person that played a huge role in you being saved, uh, like taught you growing up, discipled you, helped you through difficult. Like let's say there was one person that that played a huge role in that sense. They would have no more, um, no more credit would belong to them for your salvation than credit would belong to a hammer for building a house. it's necessary. It's a tool that's used by the builder, but the hammer had, had was deserves no be. credit. And that that's even kind of a, a an example that's used in scripture. It's um uh Hebrews uh, Hebrew I don't have Hebrews three. That's kinda like that what was aspect word earlier with me. I have a disconnect on that because I would say the hammer is absolutely deserves credit for building a house. So even if it's not even if it's in scripture, I'm gonna find the first thing in scripture ever that I disagree with. Okay. Uh for the builder of a house, uh maybe it might be four. Maybe the so wording when, Moses, it's talking about Moses, but Moses was faithful as a servant in God's house. For Jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, as much more glory as the builder of a house has more honor more. than the house itself. More. 
honor. That's talking about honor. That's not talking yeah. about credit. It's talking about honor. But it's Moses was faithful as a servant. And he says, for every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Yeah. So ultimately, God is the one that did all of that. He just used people in the process. That's, <clears throat> it's, it's, uh, God, de- all glory to God. Whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. It's all, God deserves all of the glory, all of the credit. We're just privileged and blessed enough to be able to be used by God in His work, in His workings, and that's you know like evangelism. Yeah. No, like I that. yeah, so yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. I did see another thing that was kind of interesting. And once again, I am not. This is not. This was not. I didn't bring. It, obviously, I didn't bring it. It's, I'm not in the point to art, to make a to, to debate this because I'm not to the point where you know what I mean. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, we're so just, we're just having a conversation here. No, I don't mean. I'm just being honest. Mm-hmm. I'm saying lack of knowledge and understanding for me. Well, I'm not like if you want to debate, like if you want to debate. I took, we, me and Kyle had one debate on this show, and it I it's a lot harder than I thought. I did not oh, do well. Yeah, debating is hard. It's so absolutely hard. difficult, especially if you do it the right way. Yeah, I did see something that was kind of interesting. I would be interested to hear what you'd say about this because mm-hmm. there's probably a really clear answer. Mm-hmm. I just didn't immediately think of it because of my viewpoint Mm -hmm. is I read when I was looking at some of this stuff, somebody had said something about uh, being limiting. And this this person was obviously, what would you call that? What's the viewpoint? That's not, what, what is that viewpoint? That's not Calvinistic. Yeah. That would think that, like I said, okay. So Armenian, this was a person with an Armenian viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was pretty well, not well known, but it's somebody that was scholarly, you know, obviously yeah, yeah. it wasn't somebody just blowing smoke or whatever, yeah. but they were talking about, uh, that cause the article was written about this topic. So, uh, and it was about, they said it was something to the effect of limiting the, the view that view is limiting to God because it makes it that it's impossible for both for him to have created a system where both are possible, where, he has chosen and you know what I'm saying where both of those things are which is what most where both sides are possible yeah where both belief systems are possible both of those scenarios are possible like where oh, I would disagree with that no I, what, I, I, what scenarios for like for example um the Calvinists in Arminius views people, are that people are chosen but that also people have free will to make a decision based on the possibility of witness or hearing hearing or whatever the case, like both of those can simultaneously exist. So they were saying that for that not to be the case, you're going to start asking me, I barely even remember if that was just for, but basically like all things are possible with God. So, so which is what, which I would say is probably, I would say the opposite, which was, which is probably what most people that are Arminius would believe. I would believe that, I believe that people are chosen by God, and I believe that it is a gift from God to receive faith. I 100% believe that. Yeah. I I don't, and I and I know that the Bible specifically uses the word preordained or has decided before time and all those things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But what that what that means is hard to i mean i i guess they're saying that the implications of that is difficult to swallow oh of course yeah. that's for sure the truth if it means what you think it means mm-hmm. you know what i mean um but a lot of people would say like god <laughs> did decide god does choose god does does make those decisions but but he also knew things that were going to happen before yeah. time he knew what decisions people were going to made so therefore he went ahead and basically kind of what you said a minute ago not that you were yeah, saying yeah. that but like Nobody's going to choose mm-hmm, hell or nobody's going to choose heaven and go to hell. Right. Well, he knew that before the beginning of time. He also knew. So if that person, the, if that person was saying, so, if that person was saying, I just thought it was interesting. If that person was saying that, that if both of those truths, both of those scenarios cannot exist simultaneously, then that is limiting to God. I would say the opposite that for the second thing that you presented, that God chose and, and preordained, but then somebody can also 
but he however looked, they he looked together, however they worded, I don't, and I don't however they it, worded it that he looked that God looked a, looked ahead in time and saw the decisions they didn't that even man say was that I was make. just trying to think of a okay. way to make you understand okay. what they were maybe trying to say I'll I just guess. say it this way then if the Arminian view is in my opinion is lim- is more limiting to God because ultimately it's not up to in that view ultimately it's not up to God Understood. to save it's it's it depends on the person Absolutely. it depends on that I person understand. God can hope God can God can try God can you know really he can really put his effort into it but ultimately it's up to the person it's limiting to God whereas the Calvinist view is I understand. I understand. God it's it's a, I see it's, both sides I see total, both of them could say that. God is totally sovereign including over man's yeah. will so I would whoever that was I would I disagree with you. I hate you. No, I'm, just <laughs> no, I'm saying I see both of those sides. What you just said is a, what you said is the absolutely, absolutely true. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> You've been sitting on Hebrews yeah, 12 yeah, for a so while. No, what you, no, I just didn't want to turn. I, well, y'all didn't have anything to talk about, so I like throw throw the snake. No, on the I, I think appreciate it's great. it. I, I love talking about that. Yeah. I just I think that salvation is I think bigger than. Excuse me. I think it's bigger than we make it. I think that we think salvation and we think done. Yeah. And I think that salvation is the word that catches three other words. And I think that um, justification is really what you guys are describing versus just yes. salvation. So, yeah. And um, I think that for sanctification, sure. I think free will definitely kicks in after justification. Yeah. I don't think that, I think sanctification is a byproduct of the gift of faith yep, sure. and God will bring to completion. But at the same time, it's still sanctification still requires our obedience. I mean, yep. it's all throughout scripture. So I think it's your obedience to the word of God and the Holy spirit that caused you to be sanctified, even though he's going to bring it to completion. But then glorification happens at a, at a time in the yeah. future mm-hmm. for each person and I think that that is the summation of salvation. Uh, but yeah, I justification think for sure, you're right. I mean, justification. We're talking about justification. And so. I think that for for us as people who are already believers, the justification part's already sealed, and we're discussing we're discussing for a non-believer how do they become justified? And yeah. and and that's what. And I actually I actually brought up that point as big of a topic as that is to us as believers shouldn't matter. It, it I disagree. Cause I should be doing Do, the look. Clarify I, what you okay, mean. Okay. Yeah. Cause I think so, you'll agree. So that with, is, I think you'll agree. So that is me. why I was camping. That is why I was camping on Hebrews 12. So let me just kind of, okay. yeah, yeah. just before I think, I think that I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. I think I have to have an understanding of the things, obviously. Make my calling and election sure, go to the Word of God and have a an understanding, and I think to ask for wisdom and God will give it to us. Mm-hmm. But I think it's run the race that's set before you. I think it's I think that we we a lot of times, and I, I'm I'm saying I do this too, I get so focused on everybody else's race that it takes the focus off my own race. And it's really my responsibility. And if it is to be a teacher then that's part of my race. If it's not to be a teacher, if it's to be an evangelist, then I think we still have to have an understanding of, you know, we cast seed, we water, but God gives the increase. He makes it grow. We all know that. We Mm -hmm. all know that, that we don't make it grow. So I think running the race is set before us. I think that even you can kind of say the, the parable of the good Samaritan, he says, who's my neighbor? This is not a this is not a Jew that he's talking about. So he's not part of he's not what we would consider as part of the chosen race of God in that moment. But Jesus uses an example, who is your neighbor? And it's the person I think that Jesus said as well, he said, This is how you would know they would know that you're my disciples by your loved one for another. And I'm so thankful. I am so, so thankful that I, I don't know who's predestined. I, I have no idea who's predestined. I have no idea who is chosen. You know what I mean? Before they're chosen. Before they're chosen. So it's my responsibility to love them as Jesus gives you the parable of the Good Samaritan 
And in so doing, you may have an opportunity. It's not your motivation to do good for them so you're able to share the gospel, but I think that it is, it's part of it. I think that we love people. So I think that sometimes it sounds it. I I understand what you're saying. It sounds you're saying unloving. what I was. You're saying what I was saying. No, I'm, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you're saying exactly what I was trying to say. Yeah. Why are you? Why do you need to go tell somebody about Jesus? I, They're I already. Or it's already decided. I think that they won't. They won't come to faith without hearing the gospel, according but, but, to Romans. What were you going to say? Because maybe your answer would dictate my answer better. Because I thought he was going to say. Because it's what we're supposed to do. Yeah, one we're commanded to. Which is which was my point when I said that mm-hmm. is after salvation. It, that's what that's what I meant by that. It does. I don't need to worry about whether or not he was ordained or not. I need to worry oh, about me. I need I to thought, worry about me. That's, I thought I thought you meant uh, when I said it doesn't matter. I was making the point like after I am justified, okay. I need to worry about what I'm supposed to do, which is to go to go yeah. witness to people, not. Hmm. Why am I having to go witness to people? Because I got there you, are, I got you, that's I thought, that's what I, I was thought, trying to say. I thought you were you saying just said it by trying to. I thought you were yeah. saying coming coming to a conclusion on what you believe on that topic doesn't no, matter. That's I what I would disagree. I didn't with. mean it completely didn't matter. I meant I, it shouldn't matter as far as how you go about your life. And if you don't get to that place, uh-huh. it's not it's not detrimental to your sanctification. No. If I don't ever get there. Hmm. Hmm. I can, I can, I can work through my sanctification process without getting there in that area. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can, and really, I mean, I can have, even if you get there and you're right. Yeah, somebody I can doesn't. Be, that, I can have a lot more impact. Somebody does in my not life have. Without, somebody does not have to to come to a full understanding of all of the deepest theological topics to to be sanctified. Yeah, and I was, and that is one example of one of those. I would say that. But should, what what beautiful stuff you're missing out on if you don't. I mean, if you don't what? If you don't come to your conclusion? No, 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 no. If oh. you if you don't dive Cont- down oh, into absolutely. the deeper theological Oh, topics. yes, absolutely. Which yeah. is what you thought I was saying at first. Like you yeah. shouldn't even worry about it. Exactly. Because, exactly. Yes, yeah, not yeah, what yeah, I was saying. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Gotcha. <laughs> I thought you were like, if you don't think everything, I'm the most No, <laughs> no. If you don't if you if you I'm the most narcissistic human being on the earth. <laughs> <laughs> you are missing out on everything great if you do not believe everything that I believe. No, I mean it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, no, I got you. if you Robert you Clinton. can 100%. you can you can live off of milk your whole life, and, but, but no, I agree. Man, a nice roast every once in a while, no. you know, a good steak. No, cool, good, good. Cool, yeah, cool. no, I, I got it. I agree with that. I think it's a uh, yeah, and everything you were saying was like. Was, I really think that as I've studied, I'm just going to say not not just those topics. As you just study the Bible, you find these topics laden within the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you don't even have to do a topical study. You just study the Bible and it's just like these things will, you're going to have to come to, I don't know what that means. And then you study that and it's just like, I think I understand more what that means now. And I think that it leads me to, it leads me to Theology is the study of God, and the only book I know that is true to study God is the Bible. So as I study the Bible, I come to a more appreciation, love, fear of God, whatever that may be. But it also makes me love people. It, I mean, it literally, as I study the Bible more, it's just like it just it does nothing but make me love people. And you you go outside, it's like I go outside with Jackson and I, I look out. I'm starting to see God everywhere. I used to only see God in certain little sections of my life, but now it's just like, and you start to look at people and it's just like, you start to, I love these people. Yeah. You start to care. I think that that's what the, I really think that that is what the, the gospel, I think that that's what the Bible does. It's just like, God loves these people. He, predestined or not i mean they're predestined one way or the other it just destination is 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 not to be determined by me so i think that with that being said it's just like it just does nothing but you know you're standing at tri-state speedway and i'm in the pit and i'm looking over these people and it's just like not as you know not a, in a judgment way as much as i used to mm-hmm. And, you know, you see a, I used to, you'd see a, a skull can imprint on somebody's, or you'd see them 
drinking a Coors Light and you'd have K E R R Coors Light. Coors Light. Or you'd see Thank somebody that's there. you'd see somebody that's all geetered up, you know. It's just like what does that mean? Maybe some Matthews. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I thought you meant like a chick all <laughs> dressed all all geetered up. I didn't know what that meant. Either. That's know. what I thought it meant. I thought you meant. But now it's just a, like that's a Pacola word. It's a Pacola word. But now it's just like you almost get motivated. It's just like, man, I, I want them to be free of slavery. Hmm. I want them to be free of slavery. That's where the that's where the frustrate the the struggle and the pain of like I said earlier with people that were not gonna that were going to hell that were not gonna that would not come to know Christ bothered me so much, which was weird. I know to almost say that backwards. <clears throat> Like, like, cause I cared about people like in general, like love, like not just anybody, not somebody necessarily I was close to. I would literally just be looking in, in that thought of what if, you know, and it would cause me to be, yeah, you definitely feel pain, have, I guess, or empathy or whatever you want to call it. You and definitely like, have an evangelistic uh, bent, but I've lost that in a good way. The, the, that I can, remember I told you, like, that doesn't bother me anymore. Cause I don't think about, I don't go, that's not for me to. Yeah. Think about, you know what I mean? Whether or not yeah. it's okay. Cause it's going to happen. There's a lot of people, a lot of people they are going to hell and aren't going to believe and that's okay, but I need to do what I'm supposed to, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I would say I, it's a good thing to, to, uh, come, come to terms with that, but don't lose the hope. Yeah. Don't lose the drive. Absolutely. And the, yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. And I think it's even yeah. with, you know, topics today if a if a person is addicted to drugs if a person is practicing homosexuality <laughs> if a person is a habitual adulterer if if they are a liar and i think it's i think it's love those people because they may i mean i know this and and this may be wrong so this is where you guys may carve me up that person may have been justified 10 years ago and they have gone somewhat, I'm going to use the word prodigal, but God will bring to completion. And it may take a person like me or you just to come in and water it or fan and fan that justification back into flame to where they leave behind these trappings of the flesh because the lust of the flesh war against the lust of the Sorry. spirit. So I think that it's it's our responsibility to know the Bible to where if there is a conversation that we can help them with clarity and we can help them go to the word of God. It's like, well, this is, this is what it says. And the word of God will not come back void. It will accomplish the purpose that it's sent forth to do. I would agree with you completely. The only thing I would nitpick and it is a nit. The only thing I would nitpick in that is fan the sanctification back into flame, not the justification. But that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, no, I would agree with that's that. That's what you meant probably. Um, or or fan fan that back into flames so they get back on the yeah. the appropriate road for sanctification. I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lose justification. And then another that's thing cool. with the evangelism, uh, because that's a that's kind of a common, um, what's the word? Opposition. What's it called when you uh, op- you give an opposition to a view? Anyway, opposition. Sure, that's the that's one of the common pushbacks against. Uh, uh, the Calvinist view is why well, share the gospel? Yeah, it make it makes evangelism pointless. Why even do that? Why you know that's a but uh, it, the flip side of the coin is is it makes it makes your evangelism it gives you a hundred percent success rate essentially. See, when you start trying to explain it like that though, from that stand from that viewpoint, not you, mm-hmm. I think it loses a little bit of credibility because the only answer to me in that situation is because it's what I've been led to because that's what that person's been led to do by the Lord. Because do I don't feel like you can start like what are we talking about. Well, like ensure a hundred percent success rate. Mm-hmm. What do you mean by that? Every person, every person that has been chosen by God that you evangelize to will be saved. Hundred percent success rate. So there's some that won't that will be chosen by God but will not be saying, uh, justified. No, I'm saying that's so. Not, I'm that's saying that's saying. not the case. But there's a hundred percent no matter what, whether you do that or not. It's a hundred percent. Period. It don't matter what you right. do. It's a hundred percent. That's, so that, that's that, partially true, but why would you not want to be involved? Why would you not want to be used well, by God? Well, and then on top of that, you're, command, you're, that's com- a better answer. you're commanded to. That's a good, that's not, that's the answer. That detective is the right question. That's what I was saying. Yeah, is yeah. That's the only answer to me from that viewpoint that mm-hmm. holds, that holds credibility. I, I got you, I got you, I got you. Does that make sense? Yep. Because mm-hmm. 
unintentionally, when you start to say that stuff, it starts to sound like you basically saying that man has something to do with it, which I thought that was a good, but you agreed with him on yeah. the, on being able to help people with their sanctification. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, and I, that's where, I mean, I could be, complex. but the only reason you would want to do that is because God gave, God did that in you. So I'll, yeah. I'll go right back to God. No, I, and all, I, all roads lead to Rome. All glory goes back to God. Yeah. And I think that's a little bit of his former view that he, that's important to you, Kyle, to believe that. What's that? Because of maybe how you felt before, like that yeah. you can have some impact on being on on the fact that your faithfulness and your uh, your uh, obedience can have some kind of impact on somebody for some reason for the glory oh, for of sure. God. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Because if you don't have that, then it, that makes it really hard for you. If you, were, yeah, I think not that, you, but you, mm-hmm, you, mm-hmm. you, and it may be it may be a stage of growth that a lot of us go through. I know it's definitely one that I went through. Um, <clears throat> I think when I entered the road of truly committing to sanctification, so justification came first and there was probably, even though God was already starting the work in me to bring to completion, which was sanctification, glorification, I think that there was at some point in time, especially, and I'm going to say this just because this is my own personal experience and testimony, I felt the call to get water baptized again. Because I didn't make that conscious decision to get water baptized when I did it the first time. I didn't make the commitment that this is this is my line in the sand. So you did it the same reason I'm doing it today. This is Are you getting baptized today? Mm-hmm. Nice. This is my line in the sand. I want to be a slave of Christ in in the work of sanctification in my own life. That was what that was what water baptism was to me, and maybe that's not what it is for everybody. Yeah. How old were you the first time? I was young. Did you say you never got baptized, or you did? He said when I was a kid. I got oh, baptized. I thought you said you never did. Yeah, no. So I, you're exactly like me. Then. I did. I like, got baptized exactly when I was like same. eight years old, but it yeah. was literally at a strip pit with a bunch of my cousins, yeah. and they were doing it. Just like, well, I might as well do mine it. Mine wasn't too. quite that bad, but yeah, mine was, mine was exactly that bad. <laughs> um, I just I don't, I don't know what a strip pit is. You know, um, chicks dancing around the rocks. Is up at, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout the season, man. Shout the season, man. Um, get Mining, shell and stuff out Well, they out dig out of shell out of the ground and it fills up with water. Okay. It's pretty clear water. It's really, yeah. Really deep. Pretty. Hmm. Pretty deep. Usually pretty. Clear. But, so I had Brother Billy... <laughs> I had Brother Billy baptize me again, and I felt like that was when I was like, okay, I'm making a commitment. I'm making a commitment. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's what that was for me. So yeah. I think that, but when that first happened, <clears throat> I was devouring the word of God. I was devouring anything that you put in front of me because At like, eight? no, when <laughs> I made that recommitment, <laughs> I thought so, you, I was like, kids in Oklahoma usually, most, kids, most eight year olds in Oklahoma can't even read. So I was like, how old you devouring no, it wasn't the word of God right. as, a, as so, an Oklahoma kid? But I mean, I was devouring, I was devouring any book that, I, that I had in front of me. And I was just, I was becoming maniacal about just learning as much as I could. And what it, what happened is it started to puff me up. It really did. It started to puff me up. Yeah, I got yeah. puffed up. I got arrogant. I got pious. Mission, and, I, man. and I think that you become, Puff you become Eddie. very judgmental. Yeah. Because I'm judging everybody else's stuff because I'm still a hypocrite. I'm walking this narrow road but you can kind of hide your stuff over here. Mm-hmm. And I think that Jesus is teaching on, you know, don't worry about the speck that's in your brother's eye when you got a log hanging out of your own. And I started focusing on my own race and not focusing on everybody else's <sighs> race. And it seems like things change, but mm-hmm. mm. uncaged. It's good. It's good stuff. Cage free. That's kind of, I had a similar experience. I got baptized when I was seven, but then 2000, it was Easter Easter Sunday of 2014, I got baptized again. Philip baptized me. Up on uh, McClure. Same general uh, mm-hmm. reason. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was actually justified at that point. I, I don't, I've always, <clears throat> sometimes I'll toy around with the question. I'll just kind of think yeah. about it for a little bit of whether whether I was actually saved or not at seven. Yeah. Because, because there was lots of, uh, conviction and yeah, like same leading from the Holy Spirit throughout my teenage same. years. I just got good at ignoring same. it and that kind of thing. Absolutely, so. me too. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Till about what ten years ago, probably. 
How old are you? I'm 47. How old's Brent? And, How old is Brent? And at about turn? 37, 38 is when I kind of. 47. He just turned 47? When I kind of. What about Heather? I was afraid to ask her. Really? What? She I was. Th- I didn't decide that today. I, I was think. thinking. I was thinking. Brent, I, was saying. I was thinking. Brett may have been forty-eight. I thought he was. I was thinking he was already forty. He's almost fifty. You're closer to fifty than you are twenty. Mm-hmm. Not I was, twenty, but closer to fifty. Than you think. <laughs> yeah. You're closer to fifty than you think. You know, uh, I did think about this the other. If I if I live a very very long life and get to ninety, which is doing really really well, I've lived a third of it. I think about that a, a lot. A third of it's gone. One day more, one day less. Half. Mm-hmm. You're halfway there. I will not live to be 94. My grandma did always say she wanted to die at 82 and Lord cursed her and she had to leave until she was like 90 or 91. <laughs> so I always told her that. I said, he's going to make you live. You're going to live a lot longer than that because you always say that to us just to make us upset. I've, I've got the... I want the Lord to take me home at 82. I don't want to live past then. Our family's got a good track record. I might have to live that long. You know, I think that as we look at scripture when it talks about this generation shall not pass until Mm -hmm. they see these things coming to pass Mm -hmm. it always i I do always kind of wonder are i I think probably everybody has since that was probably spoken or written are we that generation there's a i mean it's a chance you and i we us we our generation no well, I think, I, I think it's a... Uh, Pierce is not in our generation, I don't think. <laughs> I think. Well, yours, I guess, maybe. How much? How old are you? He's 44. 46. You're 46? I thought you're... Yeah. I thought I'll you, be 46 this year. I thought you just turned 44. How old are you? I'm 29. I'll be, yeah, he's not in our generation. I'll be 30, no. I'll be 30 this year. But I would say. A, so, just say this generation. A generation is usually like... He could I mean, be my baby. If you went by 100 years. years. 18. I would think 20. Yeah, 100 years. The, year the lifespan a, is the century. generation. Yeah, it's a, usually... So you and Jackson are in the same generation? That's what I said. Just Essentially. Typically, that's not what... It's not It's not categorized like Gen Y, Gen Z. But that's, that's a, not what... That's a... You're talking about generation as in a person's lifetime. Yes. Okay. Yeah, not what okay. we're thinking of generation, which is why I said you're okay. not in our generation. But I would, I would still say... Mm, I don't know. This is where I stand right now, but I've not studied it out enough. Uh, but I think Jesus was talking about this generation being everybody in the end times from his first from his first to his second coming because when he said it he said this generation which would be which the 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 just simple and clear understanding of that is exactly what he now. said this generation right now yeah where's that scripture i don't know that's what i was matthew about. matthew 25 it's right in there <clears throat> And that, I mean, that literally could have been, I mean, you know, with some of that, what he's talking about there could, you know, the destruction of, of AD 70. Of the temple. Matthew 23 explains Matthew 24. Uh, Matthew 24, 34. Mark 13 and Luke 21. Until all these things take place. This generation will not be. Yeah, the, I mean, this, the simple understanding of that is just... Now. Yeah. Agree. So, no, I, we're not... Unless he's talking about a prior generation. Yeah. Before Maybe. that, from the fig tree. Until list. these things... Mark, I'm, I'm Mark 13, 30. Now learn the parable of the fig tree when its branches has... Has already when its branch has already become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. Even so, you too, when you see that these things happening, recognize that he is near. He is capitalized, the Son of Man, probably. He is near, right at the door. Truly, I say to you that this generation will not pass by until these things take place. Mm, kind well, of like so, the coming of the Son of Man is is immediately before that. Verses twenty four through twenty seven in Mark thirteen. Yeah, it's twenty four. You got to go back to three through. Uh, 28 in Matthew 24. Yeah. The sun will be darkened. Oh, I think he's talking about his, I think he's talking about conquering death. So Mark 13, 24. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and, and the powers that are in the heavens will be shaken. 
And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds. Oh, okay. Coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send forth the angels and will gather together his elect from the four winds from the farthest end of the earth to the farthest end of heaven. I, this generation will not pass away until these things take place. Yeah, I think he, I think he had to be. So do you, would you say that he's talking about a second coming there? Yeah, I think he's talking about, I mean, the abomination of desolation, I think he's talking about. So I would say he had to, if that, if, if, if that's talking about his second coming, I would have to define this generation as the race, human race, the, no, the people who are a, the people who are a part of the new covenant as opposed to the old. That's how I'd have to define it. I mean, there's no other, unless. Uh, so, the, yeah. this generation meaning. No, I, I got, I got. I okay. was, gonna, I was thinking about something I was okay. going to ask okay. you guys. That's okay, but I didn't want to interrupt and change the subject. It's I'm, not really a change in the subject. Just, no, I'm, I'm, I've said my piece. Final answer. Like okay, so this is probably a real clear, direct answer, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, new covenant or, or old covenant time? He was saying that right. in the interme Here. intermediary. Period. Okay, so the, you would do you, that's what you would call that. Okay, yeah. So that's why I was asking that question. I don't know if that's the to, right word. It. Yeah, but basically, you're <clears throat> yeah. I've always in, I've kind of wondered that, and bringing that up and reading this, it made me think that. So that's why I was like, is that the right word, Kyle? Intermediary. I don't think that's the right. I don't know, but I know he it, said that when you said it, I knew yeah, exactly to, what you meant. To but. refer to the time between the two covenants, there's it's this intercovenantal time. It's it's I'd say it's still it's still old covenant until the new covenant is ratified through so my, the shedding is, of blood. Yeah. So my question was based on that. I was just curious what you thought. You said it's for the new covenant people, mm -hmm. or that's who he's referring to. Yes. So. Or at least what I mean, we we think. Obviously, there's okay. Once again, I mean, I, just reading my little the little deal in here, yeah, yeah. and and reading it and having some logic behind it myself. Yep. In this part, it is you can come up with a lot of different scenarios. I mean, it could be a lot of generation can mean multiple things. Like Kyle said, it could be human race, it could be Jews, it could be it could be the people that were living right then. It could be the you know it could be a lot of different things. And then uh, more than likely. Um, the things could also be interpreted some different ways. These things. Well, I think he's referring to the what he just spoke about above that. and About? The coming of the Son of Man. More than likely, yeah. Mm -hmm. But first or second? The second? For sure. I would say so. I mean, it, it certainly sounds like the second, the way okay. it's described. <clears throat> His first coming is peaceful. He's already... Here he's talking. He's he was a babe, <laughs> right? I mean, in here he's so he grew years. a beard. He was a man. He had a beard. Going in circles. <laughs> what do you think? Do you, so you don't think he's speaking of the of them, or you do? Yeah, I would include them in that. Okay, they're, that's they're, what I was. They're going, in, they're I was a, curious what you thought. In a in a few years, months, potentially weeks, they're going to be up in the new covenant times whenever he inaugurates yeah. it. So they would have lived through that, I guess. Essentially, but um, or possibly. I mean, I mean, they would have lived in the new covenant. But I would, so I, I would include. Uh, I think, yeah, I agree with you, Kyle. That the it's it's they're they're in the old covenant. It's the old covenant until the new. But there is something kind of special about the intercovenantal period. There's something distinct about it. It's yeah, not. It's, I would. I don't know what to call it. Yeah. Um, intermediary is is I think is a good term for it. That sounds like a mediator, like a like the role of a person, not a period in time. I might be wrong. There's do definitely something different. I, I asked that question because we were talking about that the other day too, a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, not into that detail as far as that, but um, from the standpoint of justification and things like that, and what it takes and what it took, and yeah, intermediary faith. is a person, not a plate, not a point in time. That's not right. Interme a person who acts as the link between people. To try to get, so it is a mediator. Well, it is eight forty-five, gentlemen. Thanks for pondering the pages, Ma Mike. Thanks for pondering the pages with us for a while. Thank you. You've been a pleasure to have on. You've been a pleasure to get to spend time with. Thanks. You only say it because it's true. Absolutely, I cannot tell a lie. Did you chop down the cherry tree? Used a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> I used a chainsaw, he said. See y'all.
Peace out.